Well, 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 welcome back to True Footy Podcast 48 and what great heights we've fallen from, Busher. A week ago I was interviewing the great young King Cookson and now I'm stuck here looking back at your mug. As some cooked dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> what a fall from grace. No, I'm just kidding. How are you, Busher? Yeah, I'm going pretty good. How about yourself? Very well, thank you. Did you catch the Young King Coulson podcast? I caught, yeah, I enjoyed it. Like I was, I actually resonated with a fair bit of the stuff you were saying. Like especially how his early days, how he was just happy to be along with the ride, like help Kados where he can. That's sort of how I feel yeah. a bit with this sort of thing. Oh yeah, fair but enough. But it was also good to see that he, in turn, came like had inspiration to make his own videos and stuff. Like that's true. Like if I haven't really had any specific video ide- ideas that have made me go, I want to make the shit out of that video necessarily yet. So it's good to see he's got that passion for it. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. He actually kind of reminds me of Joycey. Yeah. Do you, do you see what I mean? Like very... Yeah, very like modest, like... Very not, modest, yeah. Very quick to like deflect credit sort of thing. And yeah, that's true. And we'll never yeah. like... That doesn't ever get worked up. Yeah. Uh, like neither of them. Yeah, like yeah. yeah but, but yeah, no, it was a great podcast. Really enjoyed it. Oh yeah, as I said on the air, I, on the air, um, I could have spoken for, to him for like two hours, I think. Yeah. Like it was really good fun. Um, and we hopped on mention on the no meat on the Cle- no meat on the cleats podcast, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, which is Caden and Young King's podcast they do on Caden's channel. So go check yeah. that out if you haven't already. I'm sure you, they already do. But Most of the community seems to know each other. I've yeah, sort of noticed. True. That's true. Um, like the viewing community, not necessarily the creating community. I was referring yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, so fingers crossed. I might. Uh, I haven't spoken to him yet, but I I want to get Caden on as well, which would be really cool because I'm sure he has a lot of interesting things to say. Absolutely. So today, back yeah. to the football. Um, you didn't catch the All-Stars game, did you? No, I was at the Wildcats game one last night against Kansas. It was an absolute thriller game. Anyone that saw it went to overtime. This isn't the true basketball podcast, mate. Mate, you know me. I try and change it to that whenever I can. <laughs> you do love a basketball <laughs> reference. No, fair enough. I didn't catch the game either. I had yeah. work. Otherwise, we would have definitely live-streamed it, uh, yeah. or at least I would have. Um, that last quarter was crazy, though. I, I saw a little bit in the third term, and uh, All-Stars were four goals up. Uh, and they ended up losing by like 50 points So it was like a 13 goal turnaround or Yeah, because dad was watching it But when I got home from the Wildcats game He was like, oh, did you see the All-Stars killed the Vicks? I'm like, no, the Vicks killed them by like yeah. 50 points And he's like, what? <laughs> and I showed him the score He's like, oh, I just assumed because I turned it off Like when the All-Stars are up like 20 with like, yeah Yeah, absolutely ludicrous Absolutely yeah. ludicrous um, But yeah, anyway Your boys have played today Yeah, they're well, at four, yeah, it'll be a bit later today, so I'll yep. be definitely watching that this RV. Interesting, interesting. I guess okay. the way we're going to kick off this podcast is it's our predictions podcast. It's going to yep. be our preview podcast. I'm going to call it predictions so it gets more views, but it's going to be like a season preview episode. Um, and I guess, first of all, Busher, I want to know yep. how you as a Fremantle fan, we'll get the Fremantle stuff out of yep. the way at first, how are you feeling going into this season? So you want to get my pessimism out of the way, basically, yes. is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah get the neg- negativity yep. done. Yeah, it's one of those ones I'm sort of like, I do overall like the direction the club's going. I just sort of, at this stage, it's sort of like that slow acceleration sort of thing. They're sort of getting it happening. Like, I can't say it fully clicking this year sort of thing. Like, it's going to yeah. take a year or two. It's very rare, I guess, when a new coach comes in and they smash it straight away, unless you uh, yeah. Chris Scott yeah. at Geelong. But, I mean, that, that is the Geelong we're talking about who were yeah. one of their all-time You do sides. usually see improvement with new coaches, though, mm. which... Makes me intrigued because we weren't too bad record wise last year, but like, yeah, I kind of feel like there's other, other teams have probably gotten more better than we have. Yeah, I mean, I with Freeman, I like sometimes on a new coach, is the good stuff looks good and new, and then when it all falls apart and you haven't really worked out a plan B in some instances, that's where it might look really shit. I remember, yeah. I, as I talk about in my Simpson documentary, little plug, <laughs> go check it out. Uh, The Adam Simpson documentary, in his first year, the Eagles looked absolutely horrendous in every second game and then brilliant in every other second game. Fremantle's kind of already like that, which doesn't help, you know what I mean? Like, especially in the first half of the year last year. Well, we're always, like, okay going into, like, that week seven, eight, and then that, like, week eight to whenever week we cop the buys, like, we're shit hot, and then after the buy, we seem to go to piss again. Well, your injuries were a huge problem yeah, last year. Yeah, injuries right? obviously is a key factor to that. But That's still kind of an issue for you guys, isn't mm. it? Pierce and Hamling, what's the, what's the situation with them? I think Pierce is four, about four weeks, like within yeah. week four, week five of the season sort of thing. Okay. Hamling, I'm not as sure on. I think Wilson even is another back player with the same sort of timeline as Pierce, they were saying. That's pretty savage. Like yeah. Those are two very important plays because yeah. we've talked about it before. Fremantle's back yeah. line is their strongest line. Yeah. 
um, especially with Brad Hill going out, the midfield and forward lines are a bit weaker. That is, that's going to be rough. Yeah. That's going to be rough. So who are you going to be, who's well, going to be your key back? I was listening to a, a Longmuir while well, I was reading, and I wasn't listening to it. It was a Longmuir interview. Yes, Annie was saying they've got the key backs, sort of Logue and Cox for now. They've sort of yeah. got those two playing that. And then Tobe Watson, they're sort of talking about is playing him as the third toll. Yep. Can Nighthouse play a third toll role? Yeah, he's a bit of that. He can do a bit of overall. He's like that middle defender. I guess you Luke Ryan's still down there. Luke Ryan's an interceptor. Hayden Young will probably play round one. Nah, there's... They sort of not. They've sort of backed off on talks with Hayden Young lately. Like they, they're not saying he's injured, but they're sort of saying they want to manage his like body and like develop his lower body strength before they play him or some shit. Giggity. Yeah. That, so I don't. He's not playing today. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. That that does. Yeah. Throw Sarong's the bit. new favourite to be a round one debutant out of everyone now. Talk to me about Sarong. I've heard very juicy things about <laughs> him. He's looked pretty good so far. The off season from what I've seen, like, like yeah, he's. My perception was like. I always liked him pre-draft, yeah. but it seemed like when Fremantle drafted those three kids in the first t- t- in the top ten, Sarong was the one people were least excited about. I I certainly was like, but that to be fair to an extent because I didn't know as much about him. But at the same time, like compared to other prospects, like because as we all do, we watch the draft sort of like go, mm. yeah, like what this guy does, like what this guy he was a guy like. I didn't necessarily mind his game, but it didn't stand out to me compared to other top picks. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, bit more vanilla, perhaps maybe a bit more like. But still, like, they sort of compare him to Lockie Neal. So, like, Lockie mm. Neal's draft Maybe highlight reel right. probably was pretty shit, from, at a guess. I mean, Sarong is still pick nine. Like, yeah. That's very high in the draft. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting. Um, well, so, in this podcast, like we discussed, we're going to go through every team and peg yeah. whereabouts they'll be roughly on the ladder. Where is Fremantle going to finish next year? What, what like, com- like what uh, category are they in? Are they a spoon contender or are they a finals aspirant? What are they? I've... Uh, Unfortunately, so I'm quite pessimistic. Sort of have us the bottom four, con- okay. like bottom four contender. I won't say necessarily sp- outright spoon contender. I'll say bottom four contender. Who was it that was it? Michael Barlow that said you guys. Will, he thinks you guys will win the spoon. Yeah. yeah. Well, he yeah he sort of felt it was quite like I don't think he settled definitively. Haven't be sort of said it's quite yeah. possible sort of thing like. And I I certainly agree with the perspective he has on it. Yeah. Like beyond five, our midfield depth isn't proven. It's got upside like there's talent and upside there but it's not proven beyond five i agree especially obviously you've lost hill yep who's the gonna, other proven i like i like acres in but then you've also got ray shaw and chera <laughs> who are going to have more responsibility this year that could see the team step back a little bit yeah. the thing so, is i do like all three of those names chera bray shaw acres but mm. again they're not that proven exactly like, they're young yeah, and they're probably yeah, gonna yeah. Struggle, maybe yeah. not struggle, but it's going to be a very harsh reality yeah. for them if they're going to be taking serious yeah. like midfield responsibilities, yeah. right? Still, Walters will probably still be serious midfield minutes as well, and he's the other true. proven guy. He's well, that's star a, of the competition. Very true. That's the thing, though. I think you rely so heavily now on Fife and Walters because I would have yeah. said you. I mean, Hogan's not in, right? Like nah. he's going to be out for what TBC. He could pull a Tom Boyd by the sounds. Yeah, yeah, it could be anything. So yeah, that's Hogan. not great. Pierce and Hamling, two yeah. massively important parts down back. Yeah. Now, pretty much if five or Walters go down, yeah. then you could yeah. see it. And even with Hogan, that's not even counting the big urban like fun, whispered thing going around about him at the moment. So oh, like, yeah. yeah. You've heard that one? The yeah, yeah. Crown? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I won't say any more <laughs> than that. Yeah. There is, yeah, there There's is a rumour about something at Crown, but... Yeah, I won't I'm not it. sure if that's mm. true, though. I've heard... Some people speculate, so I'm not... You know, yeah, yeah, there yeah. is, there is speculation. a speculation. We'll say but speculation. That sort of stuff goes rife around these kind of yeah. plays. It's probably bullshit, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, long story short, you think Fremantle, bottom four? Yeah, it's like close, well, close to the bottom four of the finals. Okay. But probably 13 again. No, yeah, I, 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 I probably <laughs> agree. Like, I, I see the promise with Fremantle, but I think there's so much adversity at the moment going yeah. on in terms of fitness. I think yeah. I think they'll play encouraging football, but it won't translate in wins. Yeah. So I agree. Whereas Ross Lyons' style had probably plateaued the level of production it could get with like what we had sort of thing. So he's consistently pumping out that eight wins or whatever like a year yeah. that we'll get in the last few years with Ross. Yeah. I really don't think Fremantle's in a bad spot though. We're not in a bad spot. It's just yeah. this year. It's just yeah. It's more yeah. next year. I'll be a lot more optimistic this year. Like even in terms of memberships, like because Dad was happy to get memberships again, but I was like, give it a year. Mm. Because they're bloody expensive, the ones we got. And, yeah, fair enough. And we weren't going to the games as much as we probably should have, so I didn't want to necessarily put that money down. If, yep. Yeah, especially if the team wasn't that good and we weren't motivated to go. Yep, fair enough. All right, we'll move on. 
Uh, we have a question from Eagles Guy 44. He wants to know who are the biggest risers and fallers in 2020. If you had to predict a team to bolt up the ladder, Hawthorne, I guess. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. Hawthorne as well. I think uh, they're a pretty safe sort of yeah. option. Like they're healthy. Yeah, I they're, think they're too good to finish. Yeah. What did they finish? Was it ninth or tenth or something like that? Eleventh even, mate. Yeah, some, it was. It was around that, that nine it, to twelve. It got tight in that yeah. last round. They beat yeah. West Coast and might have jumped up, but I don't yeah, know if like, they finished ninth. It's like nine to twelve. That sort of ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll be yeah. they'll be pushing top six. Yeah. Biggest faller. This is just so hard to call. It, you could like in terms of a team doing a Melbourne, which I think is also that of, is the next question. So yeah. you can tie. Well, I sort of tied Brizzy into both of those sort of answers. Like okay. Brizzy's the team that could do it. Like I'm not saying they will, but they could sort of like even like Port Adelaide did it that year. They made the prelim and looked young, up and coming. Like. The sky's the limit for them. They're here for ages. Yeah. Even the Bulldogs, when they won the flag, they had that bit of a comeback down to reality with their young but good list. Yes. Brizzy has the potential to have one of those this year as well. Yes. When you're looking at who might slide the furthest, it makes sense to look at the top. And I feel yeah. like the top two from last year, this is probably the least confidence, I think, league-wide or fan, like in, the, in terms of the community, the least confidence people have had in the last year's top two. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like. As far as I can tell, nobody's really rating Geelong and Brisbane as the, even in the top four consistently. Maybe a few. Uh, there's a smattering of few of maybe who think Brisbane will be, but it, it is interesting. And you can make the case for both. So Geelong yeah. could be a big slider because they've lost Tim Kelly. They've lost more parts than Brisbane. Brisbane's a lot more intact than Geelong is compared to that last season where they won and two. Very true. So Brisbane's list is good. Obviously, they finished yeah. top two last year. They've added to it with Ellis Yolman and they added Birch who will sort of replace Hodge. Um, they got young Archie. I don't know if you'll actually add too much. But long story short, they've consolidated. So that's not the issue for them. The issue for them is, and I've said it before, is that they had a really good run with injury last year and a fairly good fixture. So on the balance of stats, statistics, probability, they're probably going to cop a harsher run this year. Uh, and people know they're coming now as well. That's right. Like teams will be going, Brisbane's coming to town, we got to our fingers out rather than going eh, yeah true up and coming team like trade it like any other game that's true that is actually a, a thing like I yeah. think that is actually considered a thing within AFL circles yeah. that, um, especially teams that know they're not going to make finals if they can take a scalp of a yeah. contender or two they that's something they can hang their hat on mm. yeah they talk about in other sports as well I always kind of used to think of it as like uh, oh every game is the same it's all four points but mm. it seems like when you're a hunted team, that is actually a thing. I think even the Eagles, well, someone was saying about the Eagles this year, they didn't respond too well to being the hunted team in 2019, yeah. rather. Um, in terms of teams that could do a Melbourne, like what's the criteria for doing a Melbourne? Is it a team that obviously drops a long way, but is it a team that's like should be doing better as in you can't make an excuse about age because Melbourne had a really good yeah. young sort of team Melbourne fell off more than the other teams that I sort of suggested yeah. like the Port Adelaide's the Bulldogs yeah Melbourne was the one that crashed and burned those other two sort of just fell out of finals but were and still like in that mid-tier mid laddery spot yeah not a complete implosion like Melbourne's was so Melbourne's I don't think anyone will do a Melbourne yeah in the same definitely way. no one's going to do it the way Melbourne did it yeah that's, that's an anomaly very rare but this was also injury related which is unpredictable mm. so I, I put the only two two candidates for teams that could do a Melbourne is uh. Brisbane who we alluded to yeah. because they're a young team that maybe overperformed I don't know if I'd I I wouldn't say overperformed but I'd say they su- expectations, expectations yeah people yeah. Are, people's aligned with where they're at like yeah. people's perception yeah I mean Brisbane are well and truly a very good team last year yeah. I, don't, I don't want to disrespect them that's not what I meant but um, smashed expectations yeah. um, and the other team that I I had a concern about, I don't know anymore after seeing them in the NAB or the Marsh rather, is Essendon purely because they had so many preseason injuries. Uh, and that is the, by definition doing a Melbourne if you have yeah. a lot of preseason injuries and then get worse. They looked very promising in the in the Marsh. Did you watch Essendon West Coast? No, I didn't get a chance to catch it. It was a good game. Huh? It was a good game. Well, I heard it was going to get rained out, wasn't it? Yeah, so there was a lightning strike or something like that, and uh. they nearly went off the field they yeah. did go off the field but they, they resumed play yeah. we'll touch on Essendon a little bit later I do want to answer actually this is a question I put in there this is not from Discord um, the next question before we get into the rest of the teams who starts this season under the most pressure in terms of coaches I'll throw up an obvious one because I think this is the yeah. most obvious one it's Ken Hinckley certainly so yeah. Kosh came out the other day um, I hate David Kosh but he came <laughs> out and said that um, 
undoubtedly this year Hinkley's gone. It's his expiry it's year, finals. isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, he said this last year as well. Yeah. Like, Hinkley's got to make finals, and he didn't uh, get sacked. <laughs> but it's his contract year now, so yeah. that's the distinguishing fact of it. Say, so, yeah, he's fucked if he doesn't do anything this year. Yeah, I think we can categorically say yeah. they need to make finals. <laughs> um, Even Don Pike at Adelaide, probably this. He's gone, mate. Oh yeah, fuck. That, mate. <laughs> that's right, fucking. Yeah. <laughs> he's uh, Matthew Nix. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, he's safe. It's a new job, obviously. Mm. Fucking who else? What have you been doing this off season, mate? I've been bloody busy with uni, starting a new degree, (laughs) all sorts of stuff, mate. Okay, I'll give you an excuse for that one. Yeah, I'm Um, trying to think, bloody. I'll throw another one out here. Leon Cameron, the controversial. I I don't think he'd necessarily be the second most under pressure, but we're looking at a team. They're almost like them. They're similar to Man City in the Premier League in that. Man City, it's not quite the same, but Man City obviously have a lot of money, all the best players, mm. and they're a distant second, right? Yeah. GWS don't necessarily have that same advantage, of course. Yeah. However, they do have a stacked team. Yeah. And while making the grand final last year is fantastic, yeah. there is a lot of pressure for him to yeah. go again. I, I could go back to Don Pike briefly, because like, like his situation with Adelaide with the 2017 Grandy where they got there and got pulverised, like that's what's just happened to Leon, so... yeah. He's under pressure to not do a Don Pike and let right. the bed completely shit itself sort of thing. Exactly. If Leon Cameron misses the finals of GWS, he probably still won't get sacked. Yeah. That's that's not what I'm... I don't think he's going to get sacked, but I just think there is a degree of pressure there for the yeah. reason that you just said. That's right. Um, what about Luke Beveridge? Again, he's, he had a great year last year, so... That's like, he's, had, he's up, down, he's a bit... Yeah. Like, if you look in his stock chart, it's a bit... He's currently probably about there. Yeah. But like, well, the flag's probably the high. Uh, yeah, it's hard to do with hands. You can't really get the depth, <laughs> really. But like, oh, it's hard to do with hands, man. Like, say so the premiership's like the height, and then like the low is probably like his worst years. Yeah. After that, it's sort of like flag down. But he's probably in the middle now, so he can sort of either go back to shit. That's right. Or he's got himself back to square one. I'd say basically. That's right. He's a very good coach. And again, yeah. when I add into this list, I'm not saying he's the third most coach likely to get sacked. I certainly a, don't think that. It's a tough one to do this year because a lot of the coaches that were under pressure did get sacked. Exactly right. So exactly this right. was tough to think it, of. It's a good yeah. question though. Yeah. Thank you. I made that question myself. <laughs> Luke Beveridge, I think, is going to be under a degree of pressure because he's got a team that is now ready to go. It's similar to GWS. They had their yeah. dip where they won the flag and then they, they dropped down. I don't think they will be too They've tolerant their, yeah, of another yeah. dip. They've learnt their lessons from the dip. Yeah. They have to... The, they're older and mature enough to... Yeah. Their do, team is yeah. strong this year. I'm going to have them fairly high up in my ladder prediction. And for that reason, Beveridge can't have a bad year. Yeah. He won't get sacked, but there is a degree of pressure there. It could be the year before talks of sackings come if it's a bad year sort of thing. Like, mm. There's probably a few guys in that category. It's like if they have a bad year, the rumblings will start yeah, yeah. getting a bit more vocal. That's other, right. than Hink- other than Hinkley's. Hinkley's, the Hinkley's definitely yep. had a, like, the most pressure. Worstfold was, and uh, then obviously now there's a yeah. contingency plan. He's not, he's not really yeah. under pressure anymore. So, so to clarify my point... Go, um, Cameron and Beveridge pressure. Yeah. Someone like Fagan, no. I don't yeah. think he's under the same sort of pressure. I think there's a difference between those teams. Yeah. Simon Goodwin needs a good year. Yeah. And when I say good year, I mean pushing for rebound. Finals. Yeah. You can't make bottom four again. Yeah. That would be intolerable. So I think there is a certain. De- mm. There's definitely a degree of pressure there. So you, I'd say yeah. probably Hinkley and Goodwin are the, probably the most two off the top of my head. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Okay, we'll start moving through the rest of the teams. And let's yeah. start with the spoon contenders. We'll start from the bottom up, as all good ladder yeah. predictions go. Gold Coast. What are we thinking about them this year? I, I see improvement, but it's still like tough to quantify compared to the rest of the league, sort of thing. Like, mm. there's few teams will up and down. Like even the bookies, like sort of have, still have Gold Coast as like 250 to one to make finals, and then the second yeah. least likely teams paying 50 to one again. So like, mm. there's clearly not much respect for Gold Coast out there, but I think they should be more. Yeah, like I think they're a good, te- like they can be a good team. They're getting there. They're doing the right things. What do you I mean? don't want to shit on them, but realistically, they're probably still going to be towards that bottom. Yeah, what do you make of their 70 point win in the Marsh over Vigilon? It's it is the marsh. I always yeah. take marsh with a pinch of salt. Yeah. It is weird, though. Yeah. Like, I, I I totally agree. Marsh doesn't mean anything. Yeah. The year the Eagles won the grand final, Fremantle belted us by, si- <laughs> like, 60 or 70 points in the marsh, and I remember thinking, yeah. fuck, this is going to be a long year. So, uh, it doesn't mean anything. There's 
there's like training loads and stuff like that. Yeah. Sometimes teams like train really hard the day before a marsh game and then they come out fatigued and that's what yeah. I'm hoping happened with West Coast the other day. Yeah, just as like a simulating being fatigued. Exactly, thing. Yeah. exactly. It's a conditioning thing. So not to do, but I, I'm still was impressed by the fact that they managed to put a team to the sword like that, yeah. even if it was a half strength too long. Like that's that's really encouraging. Yeah, that's my thing. That's what I was sort of saying. Like they're moving in the right direction. They've got the right paces. They're like doing things the right sort of. Uh, they've got the right approach. Like mm. they do it. Yeah. There's got to be a like, lot of enthusiasm yeah. around the, the amount of talent yeah. inside now. Like it's, like they're fit yeah. as well. Terrible like you just feel fit. bad. Like. Like knocking them because they're do- like I feel like they're yeah. trying. They've done everything they can. Like they're capable of doing right at this point. Like they've start. They've done everything they can to right the ship. They've brought in yeah. some mature players, yep. which we've talked That'll about. That'll help. Um, really important. Mm. I, I've I've sort of got a feeling they'll be bottom four, but I don't. I think someone else will pinch the spoon. Yeah. See, this is tough because yeah. I'm looking at the other spoon contenders. I think, and for the teams I've got in here, you can make a case for all of them. Even pushing yeah. finals, in yeah. my opinion. Not Gold Coast, though. Yeah. And I might look silly, but I, on paper, this is yeah. all, the only way we can analyse this is on paper. Yeah. And they're the team that can't make a case what? for missing the bottom four. Yeah, the, the thing is with them, their ceiling is the lowest, but for mm. me, I feel like their floor is higher than what some other teams could be, assuming they shit the bed sort of thing. Like, yeah. I think their floor is higher than other teams shitting the bed, which mm. there's going to be teams that shit the bed this year because... Yes. Yeah. The thing is with Gold Coast, right? Like we, what we saw last year was when the three out of the last first four should have won yeah. four or could have won four. They were versus the worst four team. Well, they, they were. Yeah, they were. The but best. there was a huge yeah. drop off in their. I wouldn't say effort level, but they they were clearly fucked after yeah. the half. They're of the young. Season. That's yeah. the thing. They've got another pre season under the. Like, yeah. Even though Raul and Anderson, who'll be key contributors, it's their mm-hmm. first pre season, but. Yeah, Rankin's basically yeah. a debutant. Well, he's a debutant. Yeah. It's basically a draft day though. Um. But Rank can still be in the system doing that endurance and learning yep. the craft. And they've added three experienced yeah. players. And they lost mm. Jack Martin, who realistically wasn't actually adding that much anyway. He's got yeah. talent. Yeah. But if he's not playing well, what's the point? Yeah. Right, so. And they weren't maximising him. Mm. Yeah. Which is as much that his followers is there to an extent, but like it's yeah. half like yeah. That's both sides. Like the fresh opportunity to be good for him, like... Because they didn't have the talent around him for him to show his talent necessarily, and they didn't. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it wasn't developed well. I I'll get to this mm. later, but I actually think Carlton wasn't a great choice for Martin. Uh, yeah, he probably I've, in terms of places where he could produce, that was probably better options. Yeah, maybe it was a bit harsh. Maybe Carlton will prove me wrong. Mm. But it's, like, it's back, not like they have a history of turning shit players into guns. <laughs> is it? It's like uh, they're not one of those teams. They're not Hawthorne. Let's have a look at Adelaide. Do you consider them a spoon contender? I feel like yeah. this is harsh, but I also think there's an absence of actual spoon contenders this yeah. year. Like, I don't think my Melbourne finished bottom two. I don't have them as a spoon contender. No. Adelaide are an obvious choice. So they've cleaned out Alex Keith. Yeah. Ellis Yolman went to Brisbane. Greenwood went to Gold Coast, right. as we said. Eddie Betts, Carlton, Sam Jacobs, Josh Jenkins. Yeah. There might even be more. I don't know if I got everyone there. Those plays in isolation... Nothing special. Yeah. Alex Keith is probably the best player. Ellis Yolman, Greenwood. Okay, some solid players. Yeah. But it's a huge amount of the squad to go at once, especially most of those will be best 22. And especially because those guys were like, the, obviously the heavy lifters in the Adelaide team, Sloan, Crouch Brothers, mm. Talia, those sort yeah, of Yeah, they're still there, right? Yeah, but yeah. those guys that you just listed were the guys below those guys. Yes. So now they have to replace that entire second tier, which like is very important because a lot of teams get that top end like they're heavy lifter guys but it's that second tier that really elevates a team yes and they've been decimated in that regard yes that's true by choice and they've recruited youth heavily and I, I don't want to repeat myself but what will drive Adelaide's ladder position this year is how they select the youth that they've brought in uh, so are they going to give games to Mackesy for round one Harry Schoenberg uh, are they going to like give those guys expanded roles in the midfield because if so they're gonna, yeah. probably going to cop some beltings which is yeah. fine if that's their strategy not to lose yeah. games but to develop but if they if they decide that their squad's good enough for a finals push like there's enough quality there for mm-hmm. that to not be unrealistic yeah. it, they're a weird one I find them hard to place because they're still mm. their best 22 is okay like mm. it's decent yeah I, I'm not too optimistic with them but like, yeah yeah, I think they get worse before they get better. Maybe. I, I Like I said, I think it'll just be... Well, they're another team with a good new coach as well. Yeah. 
So that might show some inconsistency. Uh, Not far off Fremantle, actually, in terms mm. of... Yeah, very comparable. Yeah. So I've probably put Gold Coast, Adelaide, Fremantle in yeah. the spoon section. I, I really don't... Like, as I said, I don't think Fremantle or Adelaide will win the spoon. Yeah. Like, you can make a case for Gold Coast not. This is why, this is actually tougher than the top four. Mm. This is really much exactly. tougher than the like, top four. The league is very even, like, yeah, I think. Absolutely. Like, all 18 teams. Yeah. So, Gold Coast obviously was distantly yeah. last last year, but that will possibly change. Yeah. yeah. But they've closed that distance. Because that, well, like, that was half my thing where I was sort of defending them. There's like, they were just handicapped that much. Like, they, like mm. if you're thinking like a handicap, they'd be like, negative 20 like on a scale like they've just <laughs> had to like overcome such a handicap and now yeah. they have and they've yeah it's yeah yeah as much as i did used to love shitting on them it's really hard to do it now because they've really done everything they can and done it right yeah that's right that's right it's just patience mm. how controversial is it that i still think carlton are in this group as well you not like- too it's not too controversial because Every year I'm the guy that goes, yeah, they'll fucking start climbing the ladder. They'll start figuring it out. And every year they let me down. Well, they did improve last year. Yeah, they had. Undoubtedly. Yeah. Under Teague, the second half of the season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the full season under Teague's definitely going to be the interesting one to see how that plays out. Yeah. They, I, they're probably still, bottom, like like I sort of said, bottom four contender rather than spoon contender. Like, it's, Yeah, that's right. You feel a bit harsh. Saying spoon contender. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're a spoon yeah. contender. Yeah. I, you're right. Well said. I, I don't think they're a spoon contender, but I will probably put them in my mix for the bottom four. Yeah. So, like, finishing fourth or fifth last. Yeah. I'll be amazed if they finish, like, in, mm. in the last like that. I don't think that's going to happen, barring, like, a massive um, injury yeah. crisis or something like that. But they're, they're another one that cuts, cuts some dead wood. Um, missed out on Papley, but yeah. added Martin and Betts and Pitney and Nunes as well. They need their existing youth to take the next step, yeah. which is much harder said than uh, much yeah much um, easier said than done. Rather, there's still a lot of guys that need to develop physically. Like they've just added um, who have they added in the draft? They added Kemp. Yeah, he's out for the year with the ACL, isn't he? Pretty much. Is he? That, well, that was he came in the draft. They knew he'd be yeah, out for the year okay. with the knee. That oh, was, that was right? not, yeah. It was known he'd be out for the year if okay. we took him. Okay. Oh, he didn't. I don't remember no. that, but fair enough. I'll take your uh, word for it. Um, who else did they take? Uh, Philp. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Philp. Yeah, so they traded around. Um, I think they yeah. traded with Gold Coast. Yeah, I was picked 20. Or, yeah. yeah, okay. That's yeah, yeah, Gold Coast traded up to get Flanders. And yeah. Then, yeah, Carlton took the lower picks because they really liked Camp and they knew he'd slide because of the knee issue. Yep. So that was Carlton's big logic, I think. Yeah. In that move. I think, though, like, yeah, so you even guys like Philp Stocker as well as another yeah. one. Lockie O'Brien, yeah. these kids that even this, Petrevsky, even though I yeah. did hint him as a guy in that last video, over to be a guy that improve. He's still slight body, like he's not. Yeah. He's not exactly a big unit mm. that can just throw kegs around and so like, man child. He's more of a slight guy that does things his way. When T took over, like it seemed like Murphy sort of reemerged as yeah. like an actual midfielder. Are they going to use him like that again, or are they going to? Are they going to give the games to Stocker in the midfield? Because that's another uh, one where it, that will influence where they finish their uh, their selection strategy. They do have Doherty coming back, which is yeah. good. Kerno's out for a while, yeah. which is a blow because he's actually a really good goal mm. kicker. With the Murphy thing, it's like tough because like you do want to give guys like Murphy every opportunity to perform, especially because it also pushes the kids to perform, knowing they'll have to earn their spot by at least being able to perform similarly to Murphy. Yeah. Like, if you can perform similarly, give it to the kid, but make the kid prove it and yeah, hold Murphy there as that standard that they have to mm. sort of, yeah. Another team who rely so heavily on their best player as well, Carlton. Mm. Yeah. Even more so than Freo mm. in terms of, like, the Probably. five versus Crips. Like, I'd say Carlton's more reliant on Crips than Freo were on five. Yeah. They're a tough one to peg. I see. I think they'll probably perform similarly to how they did in the second half of last year. So uh-huh. yeah, like fourth or fifth last, basically. What about teams? Sorry, are we going to say something? Oh no. Nah. Okay, I was going to say. Let's move into the next segment of teams who will be aiming for finals, and I've called this segment finals at best. I'm yeah. going to say Port Adelaide. Yeah. As in, I think they'll. Their ceilings. Well, fine. They so finish. what? So what you're saying is like their ceilings, like six, seven, eight. 
Is that sort of yeah. vaguely like yeah. Yeah, yeah. TLDR? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. They Port Adelaide have stagnated in the last few years, haven't they? Like they're actually finishing re- like relatively mm. close to the same position every year. Uh, but one thing they're doing right is they're actually getting the kids in. So this is like a rebuild without actually hitting the bottom of the ladder. Uh, and they've actually added some real elite talent. Like we know, like Connor uh, Rosie he was probably the biggest one of that. And I caught a bit of the Marsh game the other day, and I got to say I was really impressed with the way Charlie Dixon, like because he's mm. been a like they brought him in as a big big dollar recruit pillar of their forward line. He hasn't been able to get on the park that much. But, like, he was, like, so agile. Like, I've never seen him look that agile. Like, getting the ball below his knees as a big 200-centimeter, 100-keg unit. Like, he looked... He didn't look skinny, per se, but he looked lean. Just like, looked in good condition. Yeah, he looked great. Like, his hands are great. He kicked a bag, I believe. I didn't see the full game, but I just saw, like, bits of it, like, mm. flicking back and forth sort of thing. Yeah. So, he could be something that helps them sort of stay in the hunt. It's such an important component in the season, isn't it? Like, yeah. your best players are fit. Yeah. Not struggling. And I think that we're going to see that with a few other teams this year. So, that yeah, that's pretty uh-huh. important for them. I think they're not – like, so they've taken seven top 25 picks, as yeah. I've repeated like a million times on the show lately. But that that's a lot of youth to give games to as well. Yeah. There's also a lot of established quality on that list, like Boke's still playing well. You've got Robbie Gray. Yep. Um, and then in the midfield, you've got Rockliffe. Like this yeah. – uh, Even Hartlett. Hartlett, yeah, yeah. So, like, Ebert, there's yeah. like – there's still a lot of maturity there. Yeah. Westhoff. Yes. Westhoff's getting pretty old now, eh? Yeah, he's pretty old. He's, I was going to say old as shit, but I probably won't go that far. But he's <laughs> old. He's closer to retirement than draft, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. It's very diplomatic of you. Yes. Um, they've lost Dougal Howard, but yeah. he was the sort of player... I they were underutilizing him. They yeah. were using him wrong. Yeah. They were. Um, yeah. Which was a strange sort of scenario. Tom Jonas is now captain... I just I think the quality across the list is still pretty good. Their rucks now are going to be um, it's going to be Lysa and I think Laddams yeah. is their second ruck. What well, I wonder what were they going to do with Rosie this year? Do you think they're going to put more pressure on him to move up the ground in the midfield? Did, I don't think they need to just yet. I'd sort of what I'd do if I was them. I'd sort of like him and Robbie Gray. I'd be like psh, mm. psh, back and forth, back and forth, like let. Connor Rosie be like the Robbie Gray role understudy. Yeah. Where he gets a crack at doing the midfield stuff Robbie Gray does and then when Robbie Gray oh sorry, when Robbie Gray goes forward, chuck him in the midfield. And then if you want Robbie Gray yeah, vice versa. Yeah. Like basically have him do whatever Robbie Gray is and learn how to do both roles the mm. way Robbie Gray does. So you effectively have a Robbie Gray in the forward line and midfield. Yes. Even though Rosie's not there yet, but no, could but get to that sort of production. They need to decide if they're going to try and develop him into a midfielder now. It's all very well and good saying, oh, he's 192 centimetres, not quite tall enough for key position, so can he play midfield? Like, just because he's mm. a good forward doesn't always translate, but they need to explore that now, yeah. I would say. And like He was say, drafted sort of as a mid, wasn't he? Yeah, it's like a forward mid, but yeah. again, like I think that's a case of draftees these days. They pretty much de- try and develop a little bit of every position uh-huh. for the sake of sort of developing their resume. They're more draftable if they're yeah. versatile, you know what I mean? It's like key positions now. Especially with limited rotations and shit, you've got True. to sort of have a second role. Yeah, most and most key positions have played a de- like a degree of forward if they're back and uh-huh. a degree of backline if they're forward. Like it's just a thing that draftees do now. Uh-huh. So it might not actually mean anything. I'm not really clued in as to whether he will make a really good midfielder, but what I guess what I'm saying is now that they've drafted so many good young forwards, like uh, Georgiades, um, uh, Dylan Williams, I think, is a forward, mm. and um, Bergman. Bergman, thank you. Yeah. Um, there's probably a chance for them to slip into the side and Rosie can push up the ground. Uh, but then I think they're going to lose goals if they do that because Rosie actually kicked a shitload of goals you, last year. You could, like, I just hinted at playing him in the Robbie Gray role. You could also Dusty Martin, Rosie, like in that mm. half-forward flank, let him push up the ground in impact contests when you need that, but at the same time, yep. he's happy cruising and kicking his three goals a game or whatever. Yeah. Mm. And owning the ground ball and plucking a gravel toe. Yeah. I could see, I think maybe as a high half-forward, like as an outside yeah. sort of wingman kind of player. I don't know. I don't buy into this Nat Five thing. Like, remember yeah. how... Um, What's his Cornsy. Uh, or Cornsy was like, oh, I think we've got the next Nat Fife. And it was like based on absolutely nothing other than the fact that Fife was once a forward. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, no, interesting one to watch. I, I want to see how yeah. he develops this year. That'll be interesting. Um, hmm. yeah. We'll move on to Melbourne. Yeah. Talk to me. Now, well, uh, so I've, like, I've grouped them in this finals aspect yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Um, what do you think of them? I think they should get closer to two years ago than last season. Like, They've still got all the talent there. They've 
I, they've had a healthier preseason. Like, it was last season was 16 surgeries or some shit, wasn't it? Going yeah, into the I, season I or something ludicrous, yeah. Mm. But yeah, it was like that. Like, this year they're healthy. Like, but even the year they made the prelim and looked good and were coming before they crashed, like, they were young. Like, that's the mm. thing. They're still young. They've still got guys who have been developing. Even in that down year, they've developed through adversity. They've, True. like, learnt different skills from being demolished rather than doing the demolishing you'll probably learn different skills so that's given them a new perspective and that could help them yeah interesting point is there a potential though for psychological scarring because we know this melbourne side with their culture through that mark neal uh dean bailey era where they were getting slaughtered every week um obviously it's not as bad as that but do you think there's like a chance they've lost a lot of confidence it's definitely probably the worst team that could have had a plummet like that in terms (laughs) of like confidence like yeah because yeah, good call they were shattered and then this was like they thought they were finally out of it and then last mm. season happened so it'd be particularly demoralizing for them compared to like a club like west coast or something that's perennially makes final 70 percent of the time or whatever you do like yep wouldn't be as like disastrous for you guys if you had a down year like you've instilled that strong culture and mm. confidence in your team sort of thing whereas melbourne's bit rockier yeah this will be a big test for them in terms of yeah. how they they return from that they've added to their list in a positive way so yeah. not only did they add tomlinson and langdon who are going to be best 22 yeah. i think we agree is probably we talked about tom and outside was probably their weakness as well so yeah. i've really addressed that as well yep specifically right. jordan lewis is retired um and what else did they do they took two picks in the top 12 luke jackson yeah probably debuts round one now yeah with gorn's health yes being in factor so and Prost is out as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, no, that's um, yeah. that's really good for the Eagles in round one because <laughs> yeah. that was probably our biggest threat. Uh, so Nat Nui versus Luke Jackson. That would be interesting. Because hmm? um, uh, I think yeah, cause I, yeah, yeah. I don't know how close he will be to a debut early. But I guess my point hmm. is they've actually made really positive moves despite trading out of next year's draft, I think. Yeah, 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 was, right. they le- yeah North Melbourne were the ones that cashed in on that, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So their, their list is quite strong. I think too much quality for, to finish bottom four again. Uh, um, I'm not concerned about that, but I don't think they're going to be pushing up to the exact same heights uh, for, for the reasons I illustrated about um, like the confidence. I think it's going to take more than one uh, year. Yeah, I'd agree. They're probably out of the bottom four, but from there I'd probably say they're closer to 14 than eight. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yep. There, it's just so hard to predict. This uh, is probably the hardest team to predict for me. And maybe uh, someone like Essendon. Um, what about St Kilda? Now, this is a team who recruited heavily five best 22 players, lost some players as well. I was like Akers and Stevens and... Um, is it Nunes that lost? Yeah. yeah. Um, but overall, I think we'd say that... Oh, Jack, Net positive, uh, Josh yeah. Bruce, they've lost. Yeah. Armitage has left. Um, so last year, I actually think they got probably screwed by injuries more than most. Mm. Uh, I think they had one of the worst injury lists all year. Added to that, they've recruited five best 22 players. The case is strong to be made of them improving. I can also see it going the other way with. Like, really? Like, not saying they'll shit the bed, but, like, I could sort of see them being in the top, like, maybe that 15 in terms of, like, mm. scraping in the top half of the bottom four, maybe all the way. They've, they've got that kind of range for me rather than... Interesting. So no I, think their floor put, I think their floor still puts them low enough to scrape in the bottom floor, but... Yeah, okay. But the floor, like the ceiling's pretty high on them as well. So they don't really have any top players, do they? Yeah, no. A so they got a lot of players around that Brad Hill level. So we yeah. talked about Brad Hill being close to their best player. Jay Gresham's very yeah. good player. Seb um, Ross. Ross, we talked about. Yeah. Like there is quality there, but there's nothing like. Pretty much every team has got a player mm. they can point to and be yeah. like, he's the elite. Yeah, you know a, what I mean? a genuine A grader. A genuine A grader. Whereas St. Kilda lack that. But they do, yeah. they've kind of like... A few B pluses. Yeah, they've consolidated their B plus sort of range. Yeah. Um, so with Hill, Ryder, uh, Zach Jones helps. He comes yeah. in. He's another good sort of like B grader. Yeah. Um, Dougal Howard and Dan Butler. Yeah. Another hard one to predict for me. I think there's enough of a case to be made for them, the fact that they'll improve. Do they play finals? Well, you, you, I, you just kind of said no. Yeah, I don't think they play finals. I'm kind of asking myself, do I think they'll play finals? I think there's just too many good, <laughs> too many teams I think are better. Yes. 
that's pretty much where I'll sort out as well. And I yeah. and I sort of see their floors not that high as well. Mm. Like they've got a good ceiling, don't get me wrong, but the floor okay. is still low. Yeah, fair enough. Next up, we have the Swans, and uh, I have them as a rebuilding team, mm. but I can also see them pushing for finals. I've pushed them up because I put them in bottom two as my original ladder prediction. Yeah. And then I've thought about it long and hard and I just don't think Sydney are capable for finish, finishing bottom two. Yeah. I think bottom four is as bad as it's yeah. going to get for them. Yeah, I'll, I'll put them similar to how I put, the, like describe the Saints, like they still have that floor potential to be in the yeah. bottom four. Yeah, but I But I will say like compared to St Kilda, their upside is probably a bit higher, I feel. Mm. Like if everything clicks with Sydney, their upside is more than Saints. So like they... Probably closer to eight than fourteen, whereas I had Saints closer to fourteen than eight. They've got, yeah. they've still got some excellent players. Yeah, like, like we're talking Buddy Franklin, who's fit this year. JPK, Luke, uh, Luke Parker. Parker as well. Yeah. Um, and, Beanie, and arguably some of the best youth in the league. Mm. I think, and I, I've been vocal about that, even though I had them bottom two originally. I get what you're saying about if if it goes to shit, they could finish bottom four. Mm. I I agree with that because of how young their team is. But, that, I mean, they're going to be exposing these guys even further. Yeah. So, you got Florent, Hayward, uh, Heaney and Mills. I guess Heaney yeah. and Mills are probably reaching that age where they're starting to, yeah. like, do some heavy lifting. Um, and then Dylan Stevens is yep. probably going to crack a game. Will Gould. Um, and I'm probably forgetting some players as well, some young some Yeah, players. I had some names. Uh, Blakey. It was, uh, yeah. Haywood, uh, sorry, um, McCartan. So, there's a, lot, yeah. there's a lot of guys in there that are young. That are, It's similar to Carlton, though. It's like, yeah. here, see what you can do with this responsibility. And that's why yeah. their season could go either way. And then again, a, but, a fit buddy Franklin's probably kick at 70, 80 goals. That's a big call. Maybe 70. I can see it, man. This is buddy Franklin we're talking about. He's, yeah. they, they reckon he's the fittest he's been in a while. And yeah. I've been talking about this way about Josh Kennedy as well. Josh Kennedy just kicked a lazy six. Could not have carried West Coast more in that NAB Cup first game. Um, maybe I'm talking shit. But 70's think, pushing. I don't know, man. Huh. I, think he, I think he's a shout for the Coleman. He's a shout, but 70 is a lot of goals these days. Yeah. Well, 65 will probably win you the common, right? Yeah. And we're talking about Barty Franklin. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I wouldn't Wouldn't bet on it. Wouldn't bet against it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair way to put it. Yeah. Um, they they have lost a lot of experience, the Swans. So Grundy, Jack, yeah. McVeigh, uh, Smith and Jones all have left the club. Uh, that is actually a fair chunk of experience, um, which definitely. is another argument for them not finishing finals. I don't think they'll play finals. Yeah, I've put them as finals contenders, but I think it's finals at best mm. for them. Ceiling for sure. They've gained a couple of like average players like Lewis Taylor, Caden Brand, and Sam Gray. Sam Gray is probably the best Pick out of that lot. Yeah. Um, and I could see them turning them into decent players, but transitional period, twelfth, yeah, ish. Brand, it's a tough one because the poor form couldn't do much with him. It's sort of yeah makes my faith dwindle a bit. Yeah, but Sydney do have a good record of this yeah. kind of. They have actually missed a few as well. Um, What about North Melbourne? This is another team that's hard to peg, and they're a popular team to overlook because they're a bit vanilla. Um, Both in terms of branding, (laughs) would be a bit harsh, but like, but also just their playing list. Like, I don't think there's a whole lot of sexiness about this North Mm. Melbourne team. A bit of grit, yeah. Yeah, Ben Cunnington, he's gritty dude. That's kind of been the story about them for like the last couple of decades, really. Yeah, it's definitely they're definitely a gritty like franchise. So. Yeah, but I'm cautious not to overlook them because their team's not that bad. Mm. It's really not that bad. The argument against them is they rely heavily on top Cun- heavy Cunnington and Higgins. I've been, are clearly yeah. their best two players. They are top heavy. They're really old. Well, Ben Brown. Oh yeah, Ben Brown and um, Robbie Tarrant's a very good player yeah. too. I, I was thinking specifically midfield, but you're right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but those players. Yeah, they need guys to emerge. As they for like their midfield depth now, like yes. the guys have had the chance to work into that role and like develop into it. Now's the year they sort of like the LDUs of the world. Yeah, that's right. Sort of have to show a bit. Yeah, and I I'm a big fan of LDU, so I would back him in to do that. I think Simpkins yeah. really good as well. They've added yeah. Aiden Bonner for like basically yep. for free, former top eleven pick or whatever. Yeah, Aiden Bonner's one will get mentioned in my betting with Butcher video. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, watch that video by the way. Yes, if you've will. made it this far into the podcast. <laughs> we will record that shortly. <laughs> um, you've also, yeah, like we said, we've got Cunnington, Higgins, Tar- uh, Tarrant and Brown 
all playing yeah. like they probably can't get much better. Like they can't actually That's pegged. Do exactly right. Brown Higgins is on the way down, I'd say. Probably yeah. like he's pegged and he's probably starting on his downswing. Yeah, and Cunnington's probably got a little bit of life in him yeah. still before he goes down. But um and I think Brown will probably maybe improve like five percent. He could probably win a common. Mm. But I mean he's already playing well is my point. Yeah. Um but I guess they got guys like Zoha and yeah. Mason Wood up forward. Like, there is a bit of talent there. Yeah. It's just not... Larky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the other key, is It's it? just yeah. like, they're not... I feel like they're not rated. And they're in... Like, I... No, I'm not saying I don't rate them. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, they're a team that just mm. gets overlooked a lot. And that's why it's very hard for me to peg where they're going to go. That's the thing. Like, being a team like North Melbourne, where you're, like, not blatantly shit, like other teams have been, like, mm. throughout the time, but you're not, like, a Hawthorne big team. Like, you sort of can probably go under the radar, especially in Victoria where there's 10 teams getting coverage. Yeah. And if you're just an average one, mm. like, because people cover the shit teams and they'll cover the good teams. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I don't think they'll play finals, but I, I think they're a mid-table team. I think they're the classic example of a mid-table team right now. North. Where I'll, I'll right? give them a cheeky nine. I'm going to say they've... I'll, Ninth Melbourne. Yeah. Ninth North Melbourne. Yeah, I'll put it out there, I think. Yeah. I think they're capable of pushing. Like we, we they could, they could make finals. I'm not saying they won't make finals. Like they definitely could make finals, but yeah. if I, I'll, I'm never one to just out, I'll pick a number, but I'm going to say nine. Yeah, okay. You know, I'm feeling nine for North Melbourne for some reason. <laughs> they both start with N, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about these teams who will, and this is the way I look at it, the outside chances of the flag. So we're talking about this five to eight sort of range or five to nine sort of range. Dark horses. Yeah, kind of dark horses. Like you could see them pushing. Like if they made top four, you'd be like, wow, interesting. Not, oh my God. (laughs) That's the worst explanation ever. (laughs) Uh, So like to to give specifics on which teams I'm talking about. Geelong. Okay. I rate them behind the top contenders who will reach soon. Um, for I think we were kind of already alluded to this, but basically, Tim Kelly's left. Yeah, probably one of their best players last year, other than Dangerfield. Yeah, their replacement Jack Steven is injured at the moment. Yeah, and um, if, or he's usually iffy to play more than probably sixteen games a year, maybe at yeah. this point. Yeah, that's right. Um, they've added Jack Steven. Oh, sorry, yeah. um, and Josh Jenkins as well. Yeah, nothing too super exciting about those recruits, but I think. They recruited. Uh, they went draft heavy. Uh, so they took was it six picks in the top forty five? Unless they traded one in the end. So you, uh, you're probably looking at guys like Cooper Stevens to get a game early. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Constable's probably due for an opportunity. Depends yeah. on who plays well better in like you know preseason or whatever. I don't see how their teams improved, and we talked about it in the past how much and they're another team who rely on the older players, uh, like Selwood and Taylor, and um, even Danger's old. Um, uh, Je- I mean Jenkins is, They've just added uh, Gary Ablett they've got A classic mm, example Of yeah. a player Who's probably waning now Yeah He was our pick For digressing Wasn't he In the last Yeah, yeah. But equally They yeah. were probably The best team During the home and away Season last year Yeah Probably don't get Enough credit for that On on merit It was probably Should have been Richmond Geelong Grand Final yeah. But obviously They just didn't meet In the final oh, Sorry they met In the prelim <laughs> I'm cautious to Count them out well, I, I mean, I'm saying mm. they're probably in a five to eight sort of range. Yeah. I can't see them missing finals. I think they're yeah. a popular one for people. Again, this is a classic example where people go, oh, they're an older team. That's who I'll pick to slide. Yeah. And that's who I said at the start as well. But, I mean, it's pretty easy to slide from first. Yeah. So if you fl- <laughs> if you slide from first to seventh, you're a, you're a slider. Yeah. By definition. So. Um, and that'd probably be one of the biggest slides of one to seven. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But it, but I can still yeah. see them a quality yeah. team. Could win a final. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. Is it, do you agree with all that? Yeah. What do you think I'm, about I'm definitely with that Chong sort of assessment. Like, they're going to fall off at some time, but it's not going to be monumental. Like, even if a couple of the old guys digress a bit, mm. a couple of young guys will probably pick up a little. Even if the net balance is negative on that, it's still not going to be. Yeah. I mean, they, their next generation is decent. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to talk down. I'm not saying they have uh, no contingency. They've, they've been pushing yeah. for the youth yeah. in recent years. Guys like Myers. Um, it comes to mind straight off the bat. Yeah. Um, there's more. It's a blank right now. Yeah. But um, what was uh, what was his half at yeah. What was his says, brother called again? The Riga? cook I was saying on the was yeah. It Riga? Yeah. It was something like Ray- that. Yeah. Rhaegar. Yeah. Rhaegar. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I think they've done well in that respect. But like we're cu- we, you're, you're trying to get them to fill the shoes mm. of like Tim real Kelly. champions. Yeah. yeah. Top so, five Brownlow yeah. medalist. So they're my popular choice to slip out. Yeah. Brisbane, uh, I kind of alluded to this earlier. Another yeah. team I think will slide 
because a slide from second to sixth or something, yeah. which is a significant slide, but it's not a disaster. No, but again, they've consolidated the list. The list is strong. The youth is good, yeah. but can they back it up in a tough fixture? Maybe with a bit more oppo analysis on it. More yeah. m- m- teams yeah, keep info. a bigger eye on them. Yeah, they again. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a strong argument for it, but I guess it's mm. just that I rate the other teams higher. Yeah, I'd probably put the Bulldoggies in this category myself. I pegged them a little bit higher, but let's talk about the Bulldogs. I sort of like, mate. Like, I think out of these dark horses, they'd be the most likely for me to win the flag. If I had to pick a dark horse that, that isn't an outright contender to win the flag, it'd be them. That is a yak. Uh, no, so Javka, huh? Javka question. Who will be the dark horse this year? Yeah. I think the Bulldogs is a good shout. Yeah. I think they they've gone through their tribulations after the flag. Like the flag was when they were all like really young. Like mm. they've had some tribulations, a bit of maturity. They can probably be a better team than they were in sixteen. Yeah. They're that's true. They they've got a fucking strong midfield. We talked yeah. about it a lot. Bont, I think good chance for Brownlow this year. Yeah. They've consolidated McRae, their, their Dunkley. forward and back. I think he's not injured though, right? That's going to be iffy for them at the start of the year. Yeah, I, I can't answer that one. No, he is injured. I can't remember how long for. I don't yeah. know if that's coming out yet, but um, he's injured. But they've consolidated their ends with Bruce and Keith, so at least that's yeah. something they didn't have last year, and they finished last year really strongly. As yeah, their know. spine was probably their one weakness, I'd say. Yeah, so they've, they've added yeah. that, and I just think... Tim English will get another year of yeah. body, and like Z. He's raw. It was a raw prospect, and he sort of last season you could see him starting to be able to impact a game. Yeah, and he's going to keep adding the tools and physicality to keep finding new ways to impact a game. So true. He's one that can keep progressing and yep. be a bloody good player for him. He's got the potential to probably best ruck in the league level potential. Yeah, I like think- whether or not he reaches it's another question entirely, obviously. But he's got that potential. Yeah. Yeah. WA producing the gun, young rucks, Jackson yeah, in English. Absolutely. Um, what are we saying? The Bulldogs. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. I think they're a good. They're a good candidate for this dark horse position. The other two that I yeah. think would be dark horses because I, I don't know if I'd say Geelong and Brisbane are dark horses because if they won the flag, it wouldn't be that much of a dark horse because yeah. they finished first and second. But the other two, I would say, uh, Essendon. Yeah, I don't think I'm not as high. I don't think their top end quality is good enough to win the flag, but I just think them and Hawthorne are sort of in that range where if they won the flag, it would be quite crazy, but it's also not ridiculous. Yeah, does that make sense? For me, Essendon's probably a little ridiculous. Okay, fair enough. Hawthorne, I'm definitely with you there on in terms of Hawthorne. I think Hawthorne's a team where it's like nothing they do surprises me. They've got the talent to do stuff, they've got the coach. That's true. Nothing Hawthorne does will surprise me. I don't. So Hawthorne, their best 22 is strong. We've, we've, the depth we've might be that's iffy. Exactly right. Yeah. The depth, that's strong. You need a strong top 30 to win a flag, they say. Uh-huh. I don't know if I rate Hawthorne's 22 to 30 range. Um, uh-huh. And for Essendon, it's probably their, their depth is fine, but I think it's actually their top, top talent that I don't necessarily yeah, think that's, matches. That's my big thing with the Essendon where I... Yeah. So they've got some really, really good like B plus A minus players. Yeah, I was gonna say they're similar to the Saints in that sense. I'd sort of say in terms yeah, of just that, a better, not, better version, better version, obviously. But yeah, yeah. I mean, like they've got a few more B plus A minuses. Like I'm interested like, to see their forward line though. If they get a full, fully fit forward line this year, you got yeah. Danaher, um, who we know has immense potential. Stringer's banging home goals like quietly on the yeah. side. Like he's actually quite a productive And especially player. with Danaher in there, that'll make Stringer's life a lot easier. Yeah. So Danaher and Stringer, tipping Woody took a massive yeah. step last year and Arazio yeah. Fantasia stayed with the club. So that's actually a yeah. very formidable forward line. Did but, they keep Mitch Brown? Or did they get no. rid of him? Is yeah, he that, going to Melbourne? Did I see him play for Melbourne? Might be actually. You might, might be right about that. Yeah. He's going to Melbourne. Well, who's the other not bad? McKernan? Yeah, he's, he's not there. bad. He's like... Solid. He's not nothing yeah. special, but he does his job. They've got some young guys like um, Langford and Laverde from the 2014 draft as well yeah. who are reaching that age where it's probably time to stand up and they're, they're physically beasts. Both yeah. of them. I don't know if I ever really rated them as absolute guns, but like they're still coming up to consolidate that team. I don't think they'll yeah. be like a great necessarily. Parrish is another one who I think needs to have that leap because he sort of I think survived he- being a slight-bodied mid. He just sort of probably needs to... 
get those kegs on and get in the ring. I think he went all right in, against West Coast the other day. Yeah. yeah, so it could be his year to come out. Like even like McGrath started to have his last year. Yeah. He sort of had his coming to like the year I'm here sort of level. That's true. There's definitely like real way great potential there, I guess, yeah. but it's just they're not established yet. But I guess that yeah. could all happen this year. Um, yeah. They're a tough team to peg. Yeah, I, mm. I don't really consider them a contender, but I, I think they're probably one of the few teams that could be a dark horse. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we talked on Hawthorne as well, Tom Mitchell returning. Um, it'd be interesting to see how yeah. that system goes. Because they haven't had actually like Mitchell and Wingard and um, Scully all play in the same team, yeah. have they? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, obviously, they've had Frost and Patton, another team like the Bulldogs, who actually added some... Spine. Some spine, which they probably probably needed a little bit of yeah. consolidation, but we talked about them. I um, mean, in a literal sense, not a emotional sense. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Pretty sounded harsh. Yeah. I guess uh, if we had to pee, like a, a range on Hawthorne, I think, I think I'm very confident they'll make finals. I think six yeah. to eight, which is very specific. I'd say like six or seventh. Essendon... Their range is like six to twelve yeah. for me. Like I can, they're a club who the ass can fall out of. I like that range for us, and then I'd yeah. back that in. It's a, it's very, it's like yeah. literally one third of the list. Um, I think Hawthorne could push top four. Mm. Yeah. yeah, if they have a good injury run, which is yeah. obviously possible. Yeah, yeah. Like if Hawthorne finished fourth, I wouldn't be like, what the fuck's happened here, Jesus. Mm-hmm. I was quite impressed with Essendon. Actually, I want to answer the question from HKP. I just realised I didn't answer it. Do you see Essendon breaking their finals drought in 2020? So this is a good defensive, uh, definitive question. So finals drought, they haven't won a final in 20 years or 18 years. Ooh. So this is making the finals and winning first week. I'm going to say they don't break the drought because where I'd have them, if they do make finals, would be seven or eight. And they'll be yeah. playing a five or six away. Mm. Look, they're certainly capable. Mm. They're if, capable. That, if that's the question. They're yes. capable of breaking the drought, but I just yeah. don't see it. Yeah. If I have to pick one or the other. Yeah. All right. We've, talk, we've got four contenders left to talk about. I had the Bulldogs as a genuine contender this huh? year, but we've talked about them. So I'll move on. How will Collingwood go once to know Jacko the Magpie? <sighs> it's going to be interesting because Bames is pretty much gone, but he yeah. hasn't been really relevant to them and they've got plenty of depth, so I don't think that's, that's true. disastrous. We can just take them as face value from last year because they yeah. haven't added anyone, yeah. right? Like, they, they've they been salary cap tired. Yeah. They actually had dumped Aish, Wells, and Goldsack. They've yeah. gone. Wells is back there working in, like, yeah. Indigenous help support role or something like that. Yeah. Yes. One of those ones we don't want you playing, but... Do us a nice job, sort of thing. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, where do they? Where do they sit for you in terms of against teams like West Coast, GWS, Richmond? They're not as good as those other. They're probably the bottom of that four. They did beat West Coast in Perth when West Coast was flying last year. Yeah, there's there's quality there. They they can definitely win it. Like those are the four teams that you really can say will win it. What a blow it was for them to lose the prelim to GWS, especially when yeah. we see the team, the, the performance that GWS dished out uh, in the grandy. Because GWS got like six goals in front uh. in the in the prelim. Uh, such a blow. That'd be one of the de- most devastating losses I think if I was a Pies fan. Yeah, to if, drop that game. Especially because that would have been a crack in grandy. Yeah, exactly. I think that would, could have given them a run for their money. Yeah, that would have been a tighter game for sure. So they're another team that's capable of belt- yeah. or beating the best. The other uh, best teams. As they're well. capable of a head fade every now and again, though. Like, yeah, uh, that's right. Like that, rarely, but every now and again, they'll just have a game where just like their heads don't seem to be yeah fully. That's right. Active. I don't think they really reached top gear last year. Mm. They did. Well, they did smash Richmond. They beat West Coast. But they had some disappointing games as well last yeah, year. Yeah, they were a little. They kind of let themselves down. Freo game, but that was like right. Of, did Fremantle yeah. win that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, we took it from them pretty much right at the end. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're a tough one. I like. I, I think they'll finish around about the same spot, yeah. like around the edge of the four. They'll par. Let's say, in terms of golf terms, I'll say they'll go par. Yeah. <laughs> they're a tough team. They're such a quality outfit. That mm. midfield is so strong. They, well, they haven't really had a real My, tall. I've got one minor worry with them, actually, is Longmuir being gone. I think Longmuir was... A, very big influence on Buckley and helped helped him do his job better because like there were a lot of questions about Buckley for years as a coach 
when he had Longmuir as an assistant, they started disappearing. I'm not. I don't want to take all the credit away from Buckley mm-hmm. and give it to Longmuir by any stretch of the imagination here. Correlation I think, is not causation. Mm, but yeah, I think Longmuir did help Buckley figure a lot of things out and yeah, bounce but, ideas off. But I mean that. Kind and of everyone at Collingwood was like devastated. Well, yeah. not they. They loved him there, so I think yeah. he could be a off field bad effects on field mm. thing. <laughs> if that made any sense at all. It did not. So in summary, Collingwood, thereabouts again, no. uh, without really any strong arguments for really improving, and, but you still think they're not as good as West Coast, Richmond, or GWS. Tell no. me about West Coast. Well, I think West Coast, like Tim Kelly's obviously, gonna have, like figuring out how he fits is probably going to, there's probably going to be a little bit of growing pains, maybe like, but by the, by the time the buy's over, you'll have figured it out and you'll fly in, Strong second half of the season, mm. look really good, be in a good position for finals. I could see. He looked pretty good in the in yeah. the marsh, but we also didn't have Yo Gaff playing. So yeah. again, there was like a little bit of a different dynamic to how it'll actually suit up. Yeah, I think he'll be given every opportunity just to play his role. Actually, so um, I, I don't necessarily think it'll be him that suffers. It might be someone on the perif- periphery, like in that midfield. Mm. Maybe Ashid, maybe probably not Gaff, but. Uh, I don't know, maybe Redden or something like that. Who knows? Yeah, Redden could be the sacrificial lamb in this, possibly. Mm. Yeah. I, I guess the Eagles, like, again, if you're just looking purely on paper, it's hard to argue uh, for them not improving. I mean, we said it in 2018, though, right? So the Eagles won the flag without Nat Nui, Gaff and Shepard, and the argument was, oh, Nat Nui, Gaff and Shepard coming to the side will improve. We clearly didn't improve. So it doesn't always work like that. But there are some really good key indicators for the Eagles, and that's JK's fit. Yeah, they, like I alluded that's important. To, Kicked six goals in the um, in the marsh, and he was just looking really, really good. And I, I'm big on. I think he will actually have a much better season than last year. Um, obviously, Darling didn't play, so that helped him. But still, it was a wet game, and he was yeah. T four bag six. Uh, Nat Nui, fingers crossed, is fit, um, huh. which is a huge, huge plus for our midfield because yeah. we know we're going to get yeah. the tap to advantage. What's more the often than not. depth behind him? I've sort of lost track. Is that still Vardy and Hickey? Yeah, the best has been in years. So you've got yeah. Vardy, Hickey's, and then there's a young guy, Bailey Williams. Uh-huh. It's the little uh, ginger fella who can outleap Nick Natanui. Ooh. Yeah, he's actually got a stronger vertical leap. Dark horse around one to partner mm-hmm. Nick in the ruck because I think Williams was probably the second best ruck on the field in that Marsh game. Uh-huh. So, How tall? 199. Yeah. Right. I knew he was late. on the shorter side. Yeah. 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 So, no, I think the, the ruck depth is, and we just recruited another one in the draft, but I think the depth there is probably the strongest it's been in yeah. several years. So, it's pretty good. Um, forward and back's all strong. McGovern's not fit, but I guess if we're, we're just talking about West Coast as a season. The other thing this year that I've talked about in the video is the fixture for the Eagles is better in that. Uh, we're playing good teams twice, but we're playing them in Perth as well. Yeah. So last year we didn't play Richmond in Perth. Um, we didn't play Geelong in Perth, and we got uh, and there's someone else I'm thinking of, but um, we got belted. We uh, played we played the top four or five times and only one in Perth. Uh, this year it's different. I think we're playing like three or four of them in Perth. So if we can actually uh, win some of those eight point games, then you look at that top five and you think, oh, fifth becomes second. Yeah. And if the Eagles come second, they're a good chance. Where are they in the in the rankings? They're my second favourite. Second favourite. Yeah. Okay. Is Richmond your first favourite? Yep. Tell me about Richmond. Well, obviously, the the defending champs. Dusty Martin's arguably the best player in the game. Tom Lynch, Jack Rewald is your twin-headed dragon as key forwards. Twin-headed dragon. That's yeah. hot. Yeah, those two are a prolific duo. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. That really did add a, sec- a real edge to Richmond in the, se- yeah. in the second half of that year. Yeah. Once Lynch found his feet. Yeah. Uh, really took the pressure off Ree Walton, who was still playing decent footy, but Lynch is just, yeah. he's like a chance to win the Coleman. Yeah. Rance's retirement could be an issue, but. He didn't play last year. Exactly. So I That's sort of so. my thing where I don't think. It is an issue, obviously, but I don't think it'll be disastrous. Like, they've still yeah. got Grimes, Hooley, they've still got a great back line. Well, if Grimes go down, then that, That's, that puts yeah. pressure on, but yeah. You're yeah. Right. They're, they're probably a little more reliant on health this year than they probably were the past couple because they've had to sacrifice some of those depth players to keep their true. top end. So I think That's true. health's a more important issue for Richmond than it ever has been. That's a fair point. They did get annihilated yeah. by injury last year and yeah. overcame it. But you're right, yeah. they did. So um, I don't actually know if I have it all in front of me. Who they but all the injuries like. happened early with them, to be fair. They were yeah. pretty healthy come finals. True. Grig, Butler and Ellis yeah. um, are like... 
yeah. around that best 22. Maybe Butler's not necessarily best 22, but who'd left the club. Yeah. But even last year, they lost three or four guys in that yeah. probably 20 to 30 category. Yeah, Kutcher missed some footy last year, I think, as yeah. well. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like that tw- mm. like 20th to 30th spot on their list, they've decimated that yeah. category the past three years even. I can't see them slowing down this year. They've got some yeah. youth they've got to brought into the side. That well, Obviously, we saw Sydney stack emerge last year. Marlon yeah. Pickett's got so much upside because he's only played one game. Yeah. That's like a huge plus. I don't think he's necessarily a gun. Like I think it's completely mm. overblown, this Marlon Pickett narrative. Yeah. I saw the other day, Shay, oh, so lame, but uh, it's on KO, it's on ad, so it's probably yeah. on Foxtel. But Shane Edwards was like, you know, it didn't even feel like a grand final. It felt like a Marlon Pickett debut game. <laughs> Fuck off, mate. You're playing in a yeah. grand final. Don't be such a wanker. Uh, <laughs> and Cochin as well is like, he's making a mockery of the game. It's like, yeah, well done. You did a spin in a midfield that was putting on zero pressure <laughs> and had gone home at quarter time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, that's been inside me for a number of months. I haven't actually said that out on the podcast yet. But yeah, yeah. he will be a good player. Yeah. But I don't think there's any chance he's going to be like another Tim Kelly or anything like nah. that. He was no one. Well, he wasn't dominating the waffle. He was just a good waffle player. Uh, like I could see him being like a 20 touches a game type of yeah. dude. But like... Yeah. Well, he's playing in a great midfield, yeah. in a great team. So he yeah. and he's got attributes that will s- help s- him downhill ski. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, he's like he's a good AFL. Yeah. He will be good enough yeah. to play AFL, no doubt. But yeah, no, it's just a bit, it's just a bit, bleh, a bit much, a bit much, too much of a narrative. Um, I think Richmond will probably win the flag this yeah. year as well because I feel like they're the Richmond, sorry, they're the Hawthorne apparent era apparent rather, uh-huh. where they can just filter guys into a system, even young guys. Um, they can just bring into a team and they play yeah. well. Like if a Sydney stack gets drafted by Essendon, he's probably not the player he is today. Do you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? No, no disrespect to Essendon. Essendon are actually a good team. Yeah. But I'm saying Richmond are on that level where they can just mm. bring in any win. Well, they're, they're at the point where they can take on these like reclamation projects mm. and they work out. And, true. Yeah. Very true. What's yeah. Dale Garland up to? <laughs> Let's talk about Giants um, because I think there's still as good a chance as anyone to win the flag this year. They've- most talented list. Is yeah, we like talked about that for a while. Them. The good thing for them is these players are still coming into their prime. Yeah. Like, Cornelio is my age, 26. He's younger than me, believe it or not. He's a month younger mm. than me. It makes me feel like shit. <laughs> Here I am just trying to make a career talking about footy. Um, he's making millions. Jeremy Cameron, 26. Yeah. Um, Toby Green, 26. They're all, they're all 93, yeah. I think. Um, who else have I got here? I mean, Whitfield's even yeah. younger than that. Uh, Kelly Toronto's yeah. even younger than that. Kelly's still Josh young. Josh Kelly's younger yeah. than that. <laughs> so there's yeah. so much talent there, really. And uh, The guys are, that don't get a game, it's ridiculous. Like the talent true. of guys that don't get a game. They're strong across every line as well, mm. the Giants, which is really important. So their back line is really strong, led by Phil Davis at the back there. Yeah. Um, Nick Haynes emerged as like an absolute gun in yeah. the end of the last year. Everyone's like, oh, shit, this guy's actually really good. Zach yeah. Williams is in the mm. side. He's sure is old, but you know maybe steady he's got a rock. Bit of, yeah, steady rock. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, starring Alec Baldwin, um, that, that hodgy virtual type role. He's yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, oh, we talked about the midfield. Taranto won their best and fairest, and he's like twenty one. Yeah. That was ridiculous. Twenty effort. wasn't it? Maybe yeah. he's born in uh, two thousand uh, ninety eight. Yeah. Don't wow. Was he twenty sixteen draft? I think he was. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's a year older than Brochus. I think he's 21. But it doesn't matter. Um, Tomlinson's out. Jacobs has come in as that ruck, which will help fill a need. Yeah, that was probably their weakest spot. The only only argument you can make for them going down the ladder is the psychological scoring of a grand final loss. Yeah. I don't think it will happen. I think they'll make top four. Yeah. I like their list far too much for that to happen. The the thing is, they don't don't really have that killer edge. They don't have that Richmond West Coast toughness, Mm. though. Right, so the only time we saw that from GWS was in the finals because they missed the final. They missed the top four, rather. Uh-huh. They finished sixth. They upset Brisbane, and they beat Collingwood. Which those two games were the, where they announced themselves as like a real yeah. team. Do you know what I mean? Like they were not respected in the same way before those uh-huh. games. And I made the argument at the time that those were the best wins I'd ever seen from GWS. Uh-huh. So if they can take that into this year, then they're an absolute probably. They're probably the team to beat. But they need they need to develop that sort of never say die attitude. So they, mm. look at the Eagles when they won the flag, and look at Richmond. Like it doesn't matter what the score is, you're always scared of them. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Like there's always that chance that they'll come back. GWS haven't proven they're like that yet, but that could be an age thing. They're mm. like 26 or you know, yeah. they're starting to hit their prime now. So long story short, 
GWS is as good a chance as anyone, yeah. in my opinion. But let's go through. Give us a top four. I'd say Richmond won because of a lot of games at the MCG. Yeah. I'll say West Coast too because half their games are at Optus and they've become a good away team as well, so they'll get their share away from home as well as dominating at Optus. Okay. I'll say GWS third, Collingwood fourth. Actually, I might switch. I'm going to say Collingwood third. Because, again, they'll get a lot of MCG games. Yep. And then G-Dub's fourth. Okay. I will go GWS first, Ooh. but not win the flag. Hmm. But I think they'll win the most home and away games. I will say West Coast win enough games to finish second in the top hmm. two. Richmond will be the best team again, but finish third in that Hawthorne style where they don't win. Yeah. The, uh, sorry, they don't win the minor premiership, but they're still the best team. Yeah. And in fourth spot, I'm going to say Collingwood let themselves down again Ooh. and get leapfrogged by the Bulldogs. Ooh, I like that. Because I need to have a dirty, stanky yeah. one in the top four. I, I do can't, like I that. can't just go with the, the four favourites. Yeah, that's fair. I like that. I do like that. Yeah, so that's that's the way I see it. But I will say Richmond beat West Coast in the grand final. Yeah. And I, I would, I, okay, I don't want the Eagles to lose the grand final, but I, I feel like I really want a Richmond-West Coast grand final. I feel like that's the rivalry right now. Yeah. It had the potential to be Richmond-Collingwood, yeah. but then Collingwood kind of... Well, I don't know. I, I still think people last year wanted Richmond West Coast more. Mm. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm That's just, probably maybe living, just a, living that, here is probably yeah. yeah I'm, that one a little. I'm looking through Eagles lenses. I know that for yeah. sure. But I'm not the only one who. Well, I mean, mm. actually, no. I was one of the few that argued that West Coast weren't the second best team last year. Uh. But I, people were telling me that they reckon they were. But yeah, anyway, that's the way we see it. Uh, let's quickly go through the awards. Yeah. So Brownlow, Coleman, and uh, Rising Star. And Dominic wants mm. to know what are our Smokies for each of these positions. So Brownlow, favourite, your favourite, and then a Smokey. I'll say my favourite's Paddy Cripp because I think Carlton could finally get enough wins on the board for him to get enough threes without having to carry a team in a losing effort for him to finally get over the edge. So is, Sorry, the odds, is he your favourite or is he your favourite? He's the odds favourite and he's okay. probably my favourite as is well. Is he the odds favourite? Yeah. Oh, with, with um, Fife? I think I saw that Fife and Cripps might have been equal was on their betting, yeah. but that might have been... The one I saw was Cripps 235, Fife 350, so oh, okay, actually okay. similar. But, uh, wow. My Smokey... A bit harsh on Fife. Uh, my Smokey, I'd, I'll say Clayton Oliver. Okay, good call. Because if like Melbourne that. climb back up, he will be a big factor wire. Yep. Yeah. I will say... I will say Fife is the best player, or at least up there with Danger, in terms of my favourite for the best player. But I will say that he will probably miss a game through injury or two, mm. and Bonds and Pelly will win the prem. Uh, sorry, win the Brownlow this year. My, I've got t- no. I'll go Bonds. I like Bond, but McRae and Dunkley still too many votes for me. Fair enough. I think he's clearly better than those two, but I, yeah. I that's a strong argument. I'm going to go with a real stanky uh, Brownlow Smokey yeah. Toby Green. Ooh, because I think now that's there's a, a bingo. There is an argument that he's going to play more forward this year. Oh, what my cat. Is that oh, off? It is. We've got like two minutes to go. Should we just uh, go through Fuck it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Right. We just have to look at me for the last two minutes. There's an argument that Toby Green will play more forward this year. Uh-huh. But I think when he was playing the role he did at the end of last year where he was playing like a high half forward through the midfield getting 35 uh-huh. positives, he was just about their best player. And I think that's the way he should be played this year. And therefore... He's a chance to get enough three votes to win. But again, yeah, they hard. give him the chance to still kick goals, definitely. Yeah, yeah that's it. Uh, Coleman? Ooh, favourite. Like, I was looking at all the favourites. It's like, it's like you kind of feel them, but like, I'll have to, if I had to pick one, it's like Tom Lynch, probably. Yeah, I like it. I'll, I'll go Ben Brown. Yeah. Smokey? My Smokey's Charlie Dixon. Wow, that is a Smokey. I like it. Mm. I'm going to go with the bias call and say Josh Kennedy. Yeah. Even though he's old as fuck. Yeah. And Buddy Franklin, I'm going to have to tie with the same brush for the same yeah. reason. They're fit this year. Probably the best two, most two yeah. talented key forwards in the game. Obviously, they're just a bit older. But yeah, yeah. that's my Smokey. Uh, yeah, that's my thing with Charlie was like, he's, his first time in years, he's looked really healthy and good. Yeah. But Adelaide's probably still got the quality to get him opportunities to kick goals. Yeah. yeah. Rising star? Uh... Rao's probably my favourite. He's a clear favourite on the betting as well. Yeah. My Smokey, I'm going to say... I'm going to go my boy, Hayden Young. I thought you were going to say Caleb's are wrong. Nah. Okay, fair enough. Even though Hayden Young's probably not going to play to like round three or four now by the sounds. Yeah, okay. I think he can just come in, probably rack up 20 plus posies a game if everything goes right on the half back. Yep. Beautiful kicking efficiency. That's like how Heppel started, actually. That's how he yeah. won the rising star. Yeah. Um, 
my rugby stuff, yeah, probably realistically Rao, probably. Yeah. Um, but my smoky will be Dylan Stevens from Sydney. Yeah, I can't argue that. Good speed, good skill, plenty of yeah. opportunity. I think they'll go okay as well. Like they yeah. won't finish like real low. So yeah. Anyway, I think that's it. That, that was our <laughs> predictions video. So uh, thank you for tuning in. I'll round it up pretty quickly because yeah. we've lost the camera. Was that alive the last round of twenty? Yeah, I think so. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was. I definitely turned yeah, it back on. Cool. I'm sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, thanks guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Whatever. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.